All right, welcome back. We're going to try a measurement uh, problem again. This one is 2 and 1 third divided by 5 quarters. You might have seen this given to you as 2 and 1 third divided by 1 and 1 quarter. That would be fine. Or equivalently as 7 thirds divided by 5 quarters. Any of these are going to be exactly the same. So for this problem, we might have, say, 2 and 1 third pounds of ground beef, and we're mixing it up into little baggies. Each baggie contains one and a quarter pound. Well, how many baggies can we make? So off we go. I'm going to start by drawing my two whole units. And you notice I, I built the third one in here because I need more than two whole units. I need two and one third. So I'd really love to break these pieces up into thirds because I have two and one third but I'm measuring out groups that are five quarters, or one and one quarter in each group. So I also need it to be easily divisible by four. To do that, I'm going to take each one of my whole units, break it into quarters, which you could see then vertically here, but also break it into thirds, which would be represented by these horizontal rows. So I have now broken it into something that could be easily divisible by thirds or by quarters. I'm going to repeat that for all of my whole units. And again, this was only two and one third. So this is one whole unit, and this is one whole unit, and then I need just one third. So all of this down here is not included. It's not included because I only had two and one-third pounds to begin with. And now I'm off. Now I'm going to start making my groups here. So I'm going to need one and one-quarter, and that's going to be one whole group. So here we go. So there we are. This is my one, but I also need one-quarter. So this is one and one-quarter. So this piece, like if you were doing this on an exam, this piece would represent one whole group of one and a quarter. Now take a look at what I have left. If we were to count, how many individual little tiny pieces did that take? That took 3 plus the 12. That took 15 pieces. So this one whole group of one and one quarter is one whole group of 15 twelfths. And you notice 15 twelfths is exactly the same thing as 1 and a quarter. The only difference is I now have this nice denominator of 12. That might come in handy. But again, it takes 15 of these little twelfths pieces, 15 of them, to make one whole group of 5 fourths. Let's see how much we've got left then. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's enough for one whole group of 1, but not a whole group of 1 and a quarter. So that's 12. That's 13. So this right here is not enough for another group of 1 and a quarter. So my final answer to this would be one whole group of 1 and a quarter. And I have a portion of the next group. Again, those portions are out of 15, because it takes 15 pieces to make one whole group. And I have 3, 6, 9, 12. I have 13 of those. So 1 and 13 fifteenths is my final answer. Now that last piece here, I really could represent it a different way, although it wouldn't be the solution to this division problem. I could represent this as one group and one and one-twelfth pounds left. So this chunk that's remaining is 13 pieces. 
That's the same thing as one and one pound. But don't be under the mistaken impression that the solution to this division problem is 1 and 1 twelfth. It's not. The solution is 1 and 13 fifteenths because this division problem is asking how many groups of 1 and 1 quarter. I have one whole group and 13 fifteenths of my next group. So in the end I do have one whole group, one baggie, with some extra pieces that I couldn't fit all the way in. It didn't fill it all the way up. In terms of an algorithm, because there was an algorithm used to solve this problem, if you notice what we did, we took our 2 and 1 third and we turned it into, if you're counting the thirds here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We turned it into 7 thirds. But if you take a look at our thirds, we broke each of those thirds up into four pieces, which means we really, when you count all of those seven thirds, we really broke this up into 28 twelfths. That's what this picture is representing. Two and one third is the same as 28 twelfths. And now we're dividing it by this number, one and a quarter. And if you take a look here, we did break these up into quarters, but each group of one and a quarter, as we already said, is right here. So one and one quarter is the same as 15 twelfths. So this division problem of two and one third divided by five quarters is exactly the same as 28 twelfths, that's our picture, divided into groups of 15 twelfths. And since these twelfths are exactly the same, we could use the common denominator algorithm to end with 28 fifteenths. So this picture is not represented at all, in this case by invert and multiply. We did nothing like invert and multiply. What we did do is we did take these pieces, get a common denominator, that's shown here, and then divide. The end result, if you were to simplify this, is 1 and 13 fifteenths. So the algorithm is the common denominator, or repeated subtraction model, and it ends up with exactly this value. So again, that's the measurement approach for a slightly larger or more challenging question.